you are watching pr english shorthand dictations youtube channel this is english shorthand dictation number 360 and the dictation speed is 100 words per minute ready start the question which arises in this appeal is whether the conviction of the appellant for the offense punishable under section 308 of the indian penal code can be sustained the present appellant is accused number 2 the accused number 1 was the driver of a stage carriage bus the appellant accused number 2 was the conductor and accused number 3 was the cleaner pw1 was at the relevant time studying in 8th standard she along with her younger sister pw7 was waiting at the bus stop for boarding a bus for going to their school according to the prosecution case after the bus reached the said bus stop pw7 boarded the bus followed by two other girls there was a rush for boarding the bus when pw1 tried to board the bus by putting her one leg on the foot board of the bus accused number 3 pushed her down with his hands while he was standing on the foot board of the bus the girl fell down on the road and came under the left rear wheel of the bus she sustained serious injuries including fracture of pelvis the allegation against the appellant was that without waiting for the pw1 to board the bus he rang the bell as a result of which accused number 1 started the bus the prosecution applied offenses punishable under sections 279 and 308 read with section 34 of indian penal code apart from pw1 and pw7 pw2 was an important witness she was a teacher working in the same school where pw1 and pw7 were studying she was standing at the same bus stop when the incident occurred and therefore she is an eye witness to the incident the learned additional sessions judge acquitted the driver accused number 1 however he convicted the appellant and accused number 3 for the offense punishable under section 308 read with section 34 of indian penal code he sentenced both of them to suffer rigorous imprisonment for 4 years with a fine of rupees 5000 each in default of payment of the fine a sentence of rigorous imprisonment for 6 months was imposed out of the fine amount a sum of rupees 7500 was ordered to be paid to the victim of the offense by the impugned judgment the appeal preferred by the appellant and accused number 3 was decided the high court acquitted accused number 3 while confirming the conviction of the appellant under section 308 of indian penal code the sentence was brought down to 1 year by directing him to pay a fine of rupees 50000 the high court noted that the incident was of the year 2005 and a period of 17 years had lapsed 
from the date of the incident. The learned counsel appearing for the appellant submitted that the offence of attempt to commit culpable homicide not amounting to murder was not established on the evidence. He submitted that accused number three, the cleaner, was standing on the footboard of the bus. He pointed out that the allegation against him was that while PW1 was attempting to board the bus, he not only did not help her but virtually pushed her out of the bus. He submitted that all that is alleged against the appellant is that he rang the bell which was a signal to the driver to start the vehicle and accused number one started the bus as a result of which PW1 fell down and sustained serious injuries. He submitted that as accused number three has been acquitted by the High Court, the conviction of the appellant cannot be sustained. He submitted that the incident occurred on 18th August 2005, which is more than 17 and half years old. The appellant has undergone incarceration for a period of 36 days. He was throughout on bail. The learned counsel appearing for the respondent state pointed out that it was the duty of the appellant as a conductor to ensure that all the passengers safely board the bus at the bus stop and the further duty of the appellant was to close the door of the bus and thereafter ring the bell for giving a signal to the driver to start the bus. He submitted that the appellant had knowledge that at the bus stop many students were waiting to board the bus to reach their schools. Therefore, knowledge on his part can be inferred that by his act of ringing the bell without taking precautions, death can be caused of a passenger who is trying to board the bus. He pointed out the injuries sustained by PW1. He submitted that the injuries were very serious, though fortunately PW1 survived. He would therefore submit that the offence under section 308 was established. It is not the prosecution's case that the appellant had any intention to cause the death of PW1 or intention to cause such bodily injury to her as is likely to cause her death. The question is whether the appellant had knowledge that he by virtue of the act of ringing the bell was likely to cause death. It is not possible to say that the appellant while ringing the bell had knowledge that his act is likely to cause the death of PW1. The bus was overcrowded. The cleaner was standing near the footboard. Therefore, in the absence of intention and knowledge as contemplated by section 299 of IPC, the offence of attempt to commit culpable homicide not amounting to murder was not made out. This is not a case where if the appellant's act would have resulted into the death of PW1, he would be guilty of 
culpable homicide not amounting to murder